You guys always ask such excellent questions about data analytics and what it's like working in the industry. So I had some left over from my Instagram questions and answers that I did about a week ago, and I figured I would take on the ones that had to do with data analytics on this YouTube channel just because I think these might be very interesting for all of you. So what is going on my nerds? Welcome back to my channel. If you're not subscribed yet and would like to join this nerd fam, the button for subscribing is just right down below. If you end up liking this video, hit the thumbs up. And without further ado, I have a couple of questions I want to address today. So let's get started. So sorry to be disturbing your viewing experience like this, but I think you'll appreciate this. There are a couple of ways you can currently save money on online courses on both Coursera and Udemy that I wanted to talk about. So let's do it. Currently, Coursera is giving 25% off of the first month of these IBM professional certificates that can get you started in several different fields in tech. And so if you've been wanting to check any of them out, you can now save some serious money until the end of August on your first month on these. The second thing is the Udemy Love to Learn sale that is ongoing, but only until August 13. So you have only a couple days left. So if you have been eyeing some Udemy courses, this is your chance. A lot of courses are at $9.99. The SQL course that I always read about is $16.99. So you can save a ton of money on courses right now, but only for a couple more days. So if you are watching this, and you want to check some Udemy courses out, the links for all of this are down below. Do it and do it now. So that was it. Let's get back into the video. Does data analytics have great demand in the future? I think so. I think the demand for it is only increasing and it's it's been reported that there's a lack of enough data professionals and in most companies that I've ever worked for, the data analytics teams are always incredibly busy because everyone wants their time. Is data analytics going to look exactly the same in the future? No. And I've mentioned this in the past in videos, but in my opinion, the five to 10 years from now, how data analytics will look like is going to be probably a little bit different. Do I think that AI is going to take data analyst jobs anytime soon? No. I think a lot of people are kind of creating these like scary scenarios where like, oh, AI is going to take your job in the next two, five to 10 years. Okay, let's look at the past five years. How has data analytics changed in the past five years? Not that much. A little more people now also know Python and R. So I'd say the, the skills that data analysts have have generally increased, I'd say. There are more sort of drag and drop, like easier tools to do data analytics without having to code. So I feel like that's increased. And I think that's going to keep increasing. I think data analytics will become more self-serve for people in organizations in terms of like simple analytics. So say you need to query one table for a certain set of data that's probably going to be perfectly possible. The simple queries that data analyst teams have been dealing with um, as requests from other teams are probably finally be able to actually put into tools that all the teams are able to use in order to service the like 80% of requests that they have for data. And then the 20% that are more complex require more technical skill more understanding of the data itself and the limitations of it is going to fall on data analysts. And I think that's a great thing. I think a lot of data analytics teams do way more just like simple querying all the time for teams that just don't have enough data literacy or data skills to do that themselves. And just leaving them with the more complex work that is usually more interesting to data analysts as well is going to be a good thing for the field of data analytics because it just improves the kind of data coverage of entire organizations, but it also makes the data analyst role, I guess, more intriguing. But will AI be taking jobs in the next five to 10 years? I don't think so. I think a lot of people are looking at things like AI and machine learning and thinking like it's moving fast. It's moving faster for sure. But in normal organizations, and I think this is what we're missing, we're looking at these big companies that have been developing these technologies for ages. When we look at normal organizations outside of this, even, even within these big companies, I don't think data analysts are gonna go anywhere in the next 10 years. 
but they aren't even like dabbling in AI or if they are it's very simple machine learning or algorithms I think automated decisions is what I'm kind of trying to get to here so we've seen organizations start making automated decisions but that's not necessarily AI or AI or machine learning yet we also have switched more onto like cloud platforms and cloud computing and enabled getting data from like hundreds of sources so we have like more data at the analytics team's disposal at any given time and like getting getting that data and working with that data has become pretty easy plus maybe some more focus on predictive analytics but that's kind of that's kind of it like predictive analytics has been around for a while so it's not necessarily new it's just with more data right now and their data sets are normally not even in a condition to be used as training data. Like a lot of organizations still have shit data and using that as something to train AI or machine learning or whatever is already like pointless. And so I don't see it ha- I don't see that there's going to be AI solutions that are going to replace the analysts cuz even when we have something that automates a lot of the process and Lo and behold, I hope someone automates data cleaning. <laughs> but there is still going to be a need for people that understand data, that understand how these algorithms work, how the data is being processed. And so I think the analyst role is just going to change. And that's perfectly normal. Like a lot of roles in different industries have changed over time. And I don't think that if you start a data analyst role today, you'd want it to be the exact same in 10 years. And I've heard this kind of point come up in conversations where like, oh, well, why would you want to pursue it if it's going to be extinct in like 10 years? And I'm like, do you want to be doing the exact same role in 10 years as you are doing now? Because I don't. And a lot of the skills that you're going to be building in the next decade are going to be feeding into every, like a huge career growth. Like in 10 years, you don't know where you're going to be. You don't know what you're going to be doing. You're going to build a skill set that's going to help you in other parts of your career and other roles. And so, yeah, if it looks a little different in 10 years, that's okay. That's fine. You don't, you don't need to box yourself into like this one role that's like one type of way forever. I hope you don't. I won't. Um, and so that's kind of my two cents on that. Um, Power BI or Tableau? Uh, is there like... I like Tableau better myself, personally. I've also, I think I've seen it being used more in organizations than Power BI. So uh, it doesn't, like, as long as you have a visualization tool, go for one of those. But yeah, personal preference Tableau. That's my two cents on that question. How much English do you need for your job? And in what situations do you use English? Well, for the past three years, All of my roles have been completely in English. I've worked for a big tech company and I still work for a tech company. And I work for a global company. I live in Ireland, although right now I'm in Finland. I'm on my mom's living rooms floor. And yeah, so all the time for everything and all situations are in English. Can business students become data analysts and do I have any advice for them? Yeah, absolutely. I was a business student. My bachelor's degree is in economics and business administration with a major in international business. And yeah, for sure. I think a business background is great if you want to be a data analyst. Um, Even moving to data analytics through, say, going into business analytics, which can be a lot less technically heavy in terms of programming or Um, having to script a lot of things can be a great way to get yourself into analytics um, and then just increase your data skills and and your technical skills. Um, Business is a great background because a lot of data analytics focuses on business impact and business results. So there's a lot of different analyst roles that have to do with that. So a lot of choice for what you want to do. I think what business school teaches is also focusing on things like return on investment, which you're like, well, how does that relate to data analytics? Well, it does a lot because in order for you to justify spending your time on a data analysis, you're you're going to have to figure out like, what's the point of it? What's the impact? 
what is essentially the return on investment, even if it's not, even if that's not a dollar amount, you need to be able to say like, well, if I do this analysis, the results are going to help us by X, Y, and Z. And that's kind of like, it's, it's not always analyzing data just for analyzing sake. There's a lot in business school that relates to data analytics and gives you a great frame of reference and frame of mind to doing it. Um, yeah, any advice? Going through business analytics is one way to do it. I think after business school, because business school doesn't really teach you a lot of technical skills, figuring out those is important. Um, my advice is always to start with SQL, add a visualization tool um, like Power BI or Tableau. And if you want to look at Python or R, um, getting into one of those, there are pretty great specializations and I'm going to link two of them down below, um, whether you want to do Python or R. There is the IBM data analyst specialization that uses Python. And by the way, it is currently 25% off for the first month if you use the affiliate link that I have down below. So if you want to take that, you can get some serious money off of the first month. The other one is the Google Data Analytics Certificate, which I have been talking about before. And I would say even if you don't want to take the entire, you know, specialization because it does deal with R, um, so if you choose Python, the first four courses are great because they give you a lot of context into being a data analyst, what the job looks like, the different frameworks that are helpful in thinking about data analytics and really giving you the kind of context that a lot of specializations or courses in data analytics just don't about the job itself and how you work with different other stakeholders and all of this. So I would say that's still a really great course, even if you don't want to take the bits about R, but want to go ahead with Python. So I'll leave those two down below. And if you want to, you can check them out. But yeah, anyway, my advice would almost be going with a specialization in data analytics, just because a lot of that takes away the anxiety of trying to figure out what's the best course to take, because that's what I get the most questions on is what are the best courses for this and that. And a lot of the times it doesn't matter as much as you think. So I would say go for a specialization because it's a sequence of courses that are meant to guide you in a structured way in the topics that are relevant. And they are by organizations like Google and IBM that have a ton of experience and are employing a ton of data analysts as well. So they kind of have that industry best practice and industry standards in mind when they're creating these courses. So. Um, the two that I linked down below are really great, a great place to start um, and just even as a business student just believe in yourself a little bit um, you know it can be hard to learn technical skills if you're used to very qualitative things what was that so hard to say you already have some quantitative background if you've gone to business school in terms of numbers but it's just putting that little bit of um, scripting and programming knowledge behind it um, and understanding how to visualize things and all this. So you're probably already a good presenter. So there's also that um, business school students are usually great at communicating. So it's a good background. It's just a little bit of work on top of that. There's a question about the Google data analytics certificate. So is it enough to start a career? I'm going to link a video from Luke Bruce um, down below as well. Um, he interviewed actually people that have taken the Google Data Analytics Certificate and how they liked it. And so if you would like to look at that and see their experience on um, how the job market and everything has been after, take a look at that. Um, in my personal opinion, is it enough to start a career? I think it gives you a great sort of baseline of skills and an overview of the skills that you need. I still have a couple of courses to go to give you like my full opinion. And I'm going to do a video about it, but I would say you probably still need to practice and you probably need to have more than the capstone project to show what you know and what you can do in terms of data skills. But it's a great starting point and you already have the capstone project in that course. So you'll be able to then figure out what other courses other courses, other projects you might want to do. Yeah, I would say practice and, and more projects is probably still necessary for your portfolio, if especially if you don't have any kind of a background um, in any analytics or anything. But I would say watch that video. Um, I don't currently know how successfully people have been getting jobs with the companies that have 
been involved in the course and all of this or getting jobs at Google or whatever but I think it's still a great specialization even if you need to do some work after that just because it just covers so much and so much context that just makes sense. Next question is I'm a newcomer working in product analytics field any suggestions on how to work better with PM? I'm assuming PM in this case is product manager because it's product analytics field um, I've worked quite a bit with product managers in the past. If you're an analyst or a product analyst, mm, I would say get really familiar with the roadmaps that the product manager probably owns and what their prioritization of things looks like because understanding what's important to them is obviously helping you make I guess make them look good in a sense but like focus on what's important for the product that they're managing and aligning your work with that I think be very clear about timelines and very honest and upfront because a lot of product managers are quite busy and they're also trying to align work for the product um, from different teams and so the more information they have on what they can expect from you the better the easier their job is. Yeah, if there's any delays, any blockers or whatever, like do tell them because product managers also work with a lot of different teams. And so if there are blockers, for example, they might just know somebody that actually can solve that for you because of their network. And I think that kind of a transparency is important. A lot of the times I would also ask how they want to work and how they want to communicate because of the fact that in my experience, product managers are incredibly busy. So um, having that kind of relationship where you're trying to make sure that you adapt to how they work and align yourself with how they like to be communicated to, it just makes it easier for you to communicate your results and your work to them because you know how they take in information, for example. So whether they want to have like a short message sent to them, whether they prefer email or personal meetings or face-to-face -face meetings or whatever it is that like they want to do in terms of communication, I think having that clarity is really key. And so um, those are a couple of tips that I can come up from the top of my head. If anybody who has worked with product managers before has any tips, leave them in the comments down below. Those were the questions that I wanted to cover today from my Instagram Q&A. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments. If you like this video, find it helpful, hit the thumbs up. And if you would want to see, you know, content like this in the future, subscribe. What am I doing? Subscribe. The button's down below. <laughs> I'm so awkward today. Whatever. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Cheers.